his experiences. Scientists used supercomputer simulations to throw eight different types of stars at a monster black hole. Their goal is to create more realistic models of tidal disruption events, which occur when unlucky stars stray too close to black holes. Gravitational forces create intense tides that deform the stars and break them into streams of gas. These simulations are the first to combine the physical effects of Einstein's general theory of relativity and virtual stars with realistic internal structures. This schematic shows the star's trajectory. In this version of the simulations, the black hole has 1 million times the sun's mass, and the stars are about 24 million miles away at their closest. The model stars range from about 1 tenth to 10 times the sun's mass. The colors reflect their densities, from the lowest shown in blue to the highest in yellow. In some cases, the stars are fully pulled apart. In others, they're only partially disrupted. As these stars move farther from the black hole, their own gravity pulls them back together. Surprisingly, the stars that fully and partially disrupt aren't cleanly divided by mass. The Sun-like star, along with those with 0 0.15, 0 0.3, and 0.7 solar masses, survive their close encounters. But stars with 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 3, and 10 times the sun's mass are completely torn apart. The difference between survival and destruction depends on the star's internal density. 
Simulations like these will help astronomers build a better picture of these catastrophic events occurring in galaxies millions of light years away. Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in today. Um, uh, as uh, it, you might have been expecting a how do you know program uh, today, but the last last week was the last uh, uh, show in the series that uh, Dr. Daniel Barth put on. He'll be back on next season, uh, you know, coming up in 2022. So, but uh, last week, if you guys were tuned in, uh, you would have seen uh, a special program uh, on the Explorer Alliance where we uh, had an interview with the world's youngest amateur astronomer, uh, eight-year-old Nicole Oliveira. Uh, she's from, she was from Brazil. She still is from Brazil. And that she's a part of a NASA-affiliated program uh, called Asteroid Hunters. And uh, Nicolina has, uh, has something like nearly 20 uh, candidate asteroids that they are trying to confirm right now. But um, there was, uh, uh, you know, we arranged for an interview with uh, Dr. Rosalie Lopez from the from JPL NASA, and if you know about her, she's been on our programs before. Um, uh, she is a senior research scientist at JPL, uh, world renowned for her discoveries of uh, seventy one uh, volcanoes on the uh, moon of Io. So that was very, very cool. She's really interested in geology and volcanology. Uh, and so you kind of had uh, at opposite ends of, uh, you know, uh, our bookends here, you had this, this uh, child astronomer uh, who has uh, created her own astronomy club, uh, has, um, uh, you know, doing, do, rubbing elbows with research astronomers and, um, really just uh, an amazing inspiration in herself. I have a little video that that she sent to me uh, when we had a, um, a special presentation with her in it uh, over the weekend that was just kind of a private meeting with the Astronomical League as they are starting to form a, uh, you know, a, a junior edition of the Astronomical League to bring in kids uh, you know, probably from ages, I don't know, five to eight years old to 16 years old, something like that. Um, but, uh, you know, kids are brilliant and uh, uh, definitely uh, really absorb astronomy at an incredible rate. Um, you know, and, and in Nicolina's own words, you know, the, uh, the sooner the better uh, for kids uh, to start learning science and astronomy. So I'm going to show... I have a little video that I'm going to show uh, about that. Um, so let, let's just go ahead and jump to that here. Um,
So uh, you got a little taste of uh, what Nicolina is all about. Um, I expect that you'll see her on our programs more more often. She has uh, accepted a uh, Explorer Alliance ambassador position. So we're really proud to have her uh, fill that uh, as our youngest ambassador. Uh, and, you know, plus her locale in Brazil, where you have lots and lots of youth that are very, very interested in science and astronomy. So we think it's very cool. And we're very honored to be, uh, you know, uh, connected with her as we as we are. Um, you saw a little, um, uh, you know, announcement for the 75th Global Star Party. On the 75th Global Star Party, we, we have our schedule set up um, with, uh, of course, David Levy. We have Terry Mann from the Astronomical League. She'll be on uh, with us. Um, uh, Kareem Jaffer from the Royal Astronomical Society of Montreal Center. Uh, he'll be joined with Russell Freilich and Nathan uh, Helner uh, Mestelman. And if you saw if you saw Nathan a couple of Global Star Parties ago, I mean, the guy is hilarious. Uh, but uh, we're really excited to have him back on. Sabella Burlingame will be on with a short presentation. Then we have Adrian Bradley, uh, Tyler Bowman, Jerry Hubble, Annie Scarborough, uh, Marcello Souza joins us again from Brazil uh, to talk more about the advances of the Young Stars of Tomorrow program. Uh, Nico the Hammer, Hammer Time with Nico, you know, where he shows us uh, how he makes astrophotographs with his Dobsonian telescope. Cesar Brolo, 100-mile-per-hour uh, Caesar, will be on, and um, uh, Maxi Filares. We're also expecting Dr. Stephen Edberg, uh, formerly of the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, where he worked on Cas the Cassini mission and the uh, Galileo mission. Um, but uh, nice, nice lineup there. Of course, we'll have an after party and a wrap up at the end of that. Um, but uh, uh, and then on, that's Tuesday night. Okay, starting at six p.m. Central, and then on Wednesday at three p.m. Central, we have Sepede Hushiar. Uh, Sepede, uh, it was the subject of a 2013 documentary called Sepede Reaching for the Stars. You can watch that program if you have iTunes. You can download the uh, movie. Um, but uh, it's a fascinating account of a young Iranian uh, girl, teenage girl at the time, uh, who was uh, uh, burned up with her interest of uh, exploring the stars and, and uh, you know, someone that uh, faced incredible odds in the small village that she lived in. Um, uh, she has since... Since the uh, uh, documentary came out, um, uh, you know, this is a documentary that was at the Sundance Festival, uh, Sundance Film Festival, and many other film festivals as well. Uh, uh, she has uh, since grown up, gotten married, had kids, uh, but she's still deeply involved in science education and in her country. And so we're going to do a follow up. Uh, uh, you know, interview with her. She'll be interviewed by Farah Payan uh, of uh, of Woodland Hills Camera and Telescope. So, uh, so th there'll be a little bit of translating going on and stuff. And it's her first time to use Zoom, uh, which is the platform that we broadcast from. So, uh, so, but I think you'll find it very fascinating. And um, uh, you know, a certainly, uh, I'm very interested to know and keep up with what uh, Sepede has been up to. Uh, but, uh, and of course, we'll have more programming on Thursday and Friday. Uh, so I just wanted to check in with you guys, let you know what's happening. It's really, really busy here at Explore Scientific right now. We have, uh, you know, lots and lots of orders are pouring in, uh, as they always do during this last uh, few weeks leading up to Christmas. So, um, but uh, I hope you guys had a great Thanksgiving. I hope that um, you had a good weekend and uh, uh, we'll be here with you uh, to uh, continue on with uh, Explore Alliance programming. Uh, but you guys take care and thanks for watching.